Why don't we watch a little bit of um, this fabulous ladies video and then we'll intro her and get up on stage and have a chat. Cheers. You don't want to make an enemy of Kelly. Her thing is Kelly. She's on Top Dog way back before B, before Jax. She is a nut job. Anyone in this room is a backstabbing cunt. But I regret that choice. Then Kelly's been here for five minutes ago, what's happening? I've got a proposition for you. Take me out of the first. I've got a present for you. I don't know how much you like. Here, what you're going to do when she comes home one day with a dick. series arcs from the episode one with Celia and Kate and, and you know with, and with, you know, with Katrina as well. But you you we were you were here for a long time. No. You were here for a good time. Yes I was here for a good time. <laughs> yeah I really breezed in at the end there like. Yeah you got all the you got all the OGs here, eh? Hey? Yeah. Or well, Robbie is the other one. Oh yeah. yeah yeah yeah. Um but I wanna know I, I, let's just start by explaining how, how all came about for you, and what, what what were your expectations coming in? Because I was saying, because like I came into season four, so I was jumping on a moving yeah, train, yeah, and yeah. already had the, the the kind of the it's all of its expectations have been fulfilled for this show, and I was just jumping on board as as you were later in the in the yeah. series. What drew you to the character of Luke Kelly, first of all, and and what was the experience like? You know, kind of uh, you know. Being offered the role and then kind of jumping on board with the rest of the crew. Yeah, I mean, like all of you, I've been a pretty massive fan of the show, so I never know how to sit on these stories. 
It's no female for that, you know. Yeah. Anyway, for four, I'm really sorry. Looks like I've got piles or something. Um, <laughs> oh, just like a lady, hang on. <clears throat> right. Um, yeah, I was a huge fan of the show. I loved it so hard. I loved the kind of massive drama in it. I loved the adventure in it. I loved the gay in it. There was everything about it kind of appealed to my sense of adventure. Um, and the way the, the gig came about was kind of unlike any other. I, I, I was invited to come to Melbourne and I sat down in the um, room with a few of the writers and one of the directors and they just kind of told me the story of who Luke Kelly was and, and, and what her life had been and what her life in the prison might be like and the kind of um, temperament that she had. And I walked out of that room and I thought, because I thought I was kind of going over for an audition, and I walked out that room and I went, they fucking pitched me then. I think they pitched me that role, which had never happened to me before. And um, uh, and so, of course, you know, when they rang, they said, you're interested. I was like, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I am very interested. For the right money. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm going to play it cool. But, um, I mean... To like get an opportunity to play a character that has just like got so much in them to give was yeah it was was a no brainer for me. I mean I think up until that point a lot of the roles I played had a level of reserve, a level of kind of think before you speak, a level of um, safety and dignity, and kind of were held in some way, and so this role was none of those things. This role was kind of like guts unbridled. on the floor, unbridled, kind of infantile in their emotions. They were, I always just thought about them as like that cunt on the back of a bus that I always wanted to be but never was going to and could never handle with the repercussions of, you know, like. And so suddenly you get the opportunity to be that asshole and <laughs> To, for that to be your job. And I think because of her sense of humour and because her, of her massive love story as well, there was just so much in it that I knew was going to be a pretty wild ride. Did you have any reservations? Like, was there, like, were you kind of going, oh, God, can I do it? Like, was there any sort of sense of that for you? Or was like, this is, oh, I, this is the role I've been waiting for and I can absolutely smash this? I mean, yeah, I mean, don't we all have reservations over everything? Have doubt, and you know when you're entering a show that has this kind of calibre of artists working on it that, well, partly that's deeply exciting because you go, I'm going to have to rise to meet this. But also it's a really safe feeling as well because you go, I'm going to be playing with the best of the best and so they're going to bring this stuff out in you as well. Um, so of course you rock up, and knowing that it had such a massive fan base as well, there is that internal monologue that goes, don't fuck them up. No, that's right. Like, <laughs> don't make them regret this, like, please be a positive addition. Um, and also you knew that it was going to be a character that was going to fuck with some of the dearest yeah. of the deer, in the, you know, and people yeah. were going to, like, hate Lou Kelly for what she did. But I was so up for it. I was so excited. Is it, is it, is it, too excited. We've chatted a little bit about it before with some of the other guys, but the sense of responsibility that yeah. you have to tell a story yeah. of a character, but not only that, to tell a story, the, the, the story of a woman, and, you know, in in this uh, in, in this environment, and then that's then there's the sort of the story of you know the, the love story and everything. It's 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 a heavy responsibility sometimes, isn't it, to actually? Yeah, have... yeah, and I mean that's where the kind of like where the love of your character is so important because you want to rock up to this first day of work having fallen deeply in love with your character for all their flaws and all their brilliance but have so much um, care for their voice and, and care for the history that they came from. I mean, I had to be, all of my work, kind of preparing for Lou was, was pretty much about Lou as a kid because I thought you're going to meet this woman who is, you know, is going to do a lot of really fucking shitty things but this woman was also once a child and she's ended up in prison in a system that is so screwed. Yeah. 
And so, yeah, most of my prep for me was going, what, was your, what, what were you like as a kid? What was your childhood like? What were you like before you were put in a position where you started to make these choices? So then when you get in, in there, you can un I could understand where all of her, um, uh, what's the word, where, um, what's it called? Your masks, all of your masks and your facades and your kind of, the, 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 the way that you show the world who you are is very different to who you actually yeah, are. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so I felt like I could back her defence mechanisms because I knew who she was before all of this, yeah. In your mind, in, in terms of, because um, we, the audience don't get to see that specific kind of work that you do, right? It's, yeah. That's for you, that's for you yeah. to do to create the character. Was, was it a place of trauma for her that where she came from. Yeah, where she yeah had, absolutely. That, that made yeah. her that kind of who she is and that and yeah. kind of, I guess, forced that hard veneer. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I think I, the, most of the backstory I had, I mean, we, <laughs> Kat and I had a lot of joy creating a backstory together as kind of Boomer and Lou growing up in, you know, bumfuck nowhere and kind of having this kind of wild life. But I did create um, a backstory for her that was pretty traumatic. Um, and I think that, I mean, the good thing about Wentworth is they, as, as fast as it moves, they do give you moments where you get to see into the character's psyche a little bit. Like, Lou got a few moments where you would get to see her on her own. And also, Lou was just a very different woman when she was with Rev than she was when she was out in the prison. So, so all of, yeah, all of those textures, the show kind of gave you the opportunity to... To, to be witnessed, you know, to yeah. A bit beyond, the, a bit deeper into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I don't think you could, yeah, I mean, how do you, I mean, some people never empathised with Lou. But if but the people who did, I think they did because they got to see, you know, into her world in a few other moments, yeah. And that, uh, you know, there was probably some connection there where they, where they, it, it, it paralleled in a way their own experience in some ways and they go, oh, you know, I totally get, I get why she is. Yeah, I mean, Lou is the extreme of it. Yes. But we all have different kind of fronts that we put up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah. Uh, the, the way you tell the story about the, you know, the kind of the, inter, you know, well, the, the sort of the pitch process and stuff reminds me a little bit of the of when Pino um, tells the, who was the producer, tells the story about Pamela Ray and how they, they knew they wanted Pamela Ray to play mm. Joan Ferguson. That was it. And they kind of got her and had a meeting and d described this whole thing. Now, I'm not sure, we were talking before, is there a Lou Kelly, was there a Lou Kelly? Yeah, there was. Yeah. In, in prisoner? prisoner. Yeah. There was, yeah. right, right, yeah. right. Because uh, I, I know that Pam was saying, you know, one of the things for her was to like, oh, okay, well, um, you know, uh, I know that that was a character that was already done in a very, very strong way, right, by Maggie Kirkpatrick. How do I create something that's new that but that but still honors that in a sense? But it's also the whole thing like when you look at it, you go, I can I cannot imagine anybody else playing the freak. And I no, think in no, your situation yeah. there's no one else that I can imagine playing the freak. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well you merge, don't you? I mean, same with you. You you you're the character and the you bring a lot of kind of merge yeah, and you, yeah. you can't help but bring yourself of course, to of it course, entirely, well, yeah. you know. So um yeah, and part of the fun of watching you do your thing was just that kind of like you had some of the some just some zinger lines, you know, yes, some yes, 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 yes. a great sense of humour, but yeah. which which also came from that veneer as well. Like you know, yeah. I don't give a fuck, yeah. and yeah. I can say whatever I want because yeah. I don't care, and then yeah. so it gave me great license to sort of just to have fun with it, and yeah. I looked like you were having a great time. Look like yeah, you I mean, she just. Yeah, it is that feeling of like, I've got nothing to lose here. And I also like, this is my life, and if I'm not going to fucking enjoy it, what's the point as no, well, I it. think. And her capacity to kind of revel in violence and revel in kind of making other people, you know, terrifying. It would be, you know, you know, terrify other people, I think, fueled her sense of self as well. And yeah. I think she just, I think in a lot of ways she was also, a, yeah, an incredibly joyful joyous character right, right. and I think I I lent into that pretty hard because I I just I wanted to have a lot of fun with her because I knew that there was a lot of darkness to come in mm. Lou's story yeah. and so it was really important that particularly in that you know the early part of that first season that we just saw the life force 
in her because I knew at some point that was going to get challenged. Yeah, we did. We, we yeah. kind of did know that that's that that's where where the storyline was going. And we were talking before about an actor when an actor. Um, you come onto set and you you have these kind of th these I guess chemistry with somebody else, but with Zoe Tarakis you already had chemistry right before you guys set set foot on on set you knew each other not very well actually oh, yeah, well, yeah, no, we met a few times but oh, yeah right. we didn't really know each other so it was all kind of created on there and yeah we just. Kind of blast. That's interesting because yeah. I actually thought, oh, they, I thought they must be old friends. Like, yeah, no, it? no, we'd met a couple of times, oh, met a few times, but yeah, yeah they house sit my cat once. Yeah, <laughs> so, you know, yeah, that had happened. But, but I, I do remember you guys specifically kind of nurturing that offset, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that relationship that you had as, wasn't just, okay. What does the script say we do here? Let's just go and do that. I, I remember you guys in the green room always having like creating a relationship that was real, that was, and that still exists today. I mean, you're still mates yeah, yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah. So, and, and, and that's not manufactured, you know, that's. Yeah, I mean, I think it was also, I mean, it was just really important for us that that story, I mean, amongst all the darkness, that that story was this kind of beautiful bit of light throughout it and it needed to and that relationship I mean they, they pitched it to us as a kind of Romeo and Juliet story and and that that needed to kind of without I think without that love story Lou is just kind of a monster really and I think that it was just it was so important that we saw that at the core of this yeah yeah and can, can you do you have any particular like, sort of favorite moments that over the, over the series did you? Yeah, I was answering this before. I think I, I, my, one of my favourite moments was, yeah, that very first time having my finger chopped off. Because that was like the first like day of shooting, maybe. It was definitely, the, might have been the second. We may have done the, the cars first, and it was the second, but it was my first time in prison. And you walk into this set that you've seen on TV and you go, oh my God, that person was killed here and that person was fucked up there. <laughs> so the, the set itself holds this kind of incredible story within it and it's frightening like as an actor walking through. You're very much living in, in the prison. It's yeah. there. Yeah. And, um, and I remember going into, um, yeah, going into the space in which we were doing this and, you know, and meeting these... Some, some of the actors meeting them for the first time, but definitely meeting the characters for the first time. And Lou comes in with such kind of like bravado and like arrogance. Like, but it's Kate, I'm like, <laughs> so nice to meet you. <laughs> so nice. I think they're happy. And then Lou's just the complete opposite. And I remember that scene to me. Like, okay, this is how I've got to play it, you know? Like, and, and yeah. And I found myself being kind of extra, kind of quiet and lovely. I was just like, hello. I'm so, actually a nice person. Can I, I'm yeah, a yeah. Really Can I need you something? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I love that. I love the stuff, um, a lot of the stuff with booms and stuff in the shower where I kind of threatened to take off her finger and, you know, there was a, working with Kat was a total joy. We always had so much fun in all of those scenes. And, but it was very rare to, like, have a dull day for me on that set. I felt like there weren't many scenes that didn't have something massive in it and some big adventure in it. And, no. Yeah, it was utterly thrilling. So... It was, and it was what it was to watch as well. It was like she was just a tornado. Yeah, she's a, and she's such a loose cannon. I think that's great when you when you kind of see those characters go. I don't actually know where this is going to go, and yeah. that's a really exciting thing to play in and watch. Yeah. And yeah, so I was pretty fortunate. Yeah, we we that. we, we yeah. talked a little bit with some of the other guys about um, the other folks about uh, the antidote to a lot of that heavy stuff that we used to have to do through the course of the, of the, the show, and that was to, to have a laugh. Just and to be idiots. Yeah. To be idiots, to be goofing off yeah. and, and stuff like that. And we did that, we did that a lot. And it was not like we kind of forced ourselves, okay, we've got to laugh now. <laughs> um, we, you need the relief, don't you? Yeah, no, you like do. I remember watching, you know, Viv kind of, you know, trying to drown Viv in that garbage, you know, the, you know, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dumpster, yeah, yeah. And um, and it was just like this. It was a horrendous scene, and you know, in between takes, Viv was like this little kind of mermaid frolicking yeah. around. And, so, and it was a freezing night, and the water inside that dumpster was really warm. So Viv was just like, ah, I mean, a jacuzzi, dying in and out. It's just like, 
Yeah, it was pretty. It was it was pretty wonderful. Yeah, and I think that the energy that you hold on to so much in this show, which is like I could fuck you up any minute, is is kind of a similar energy to oh my god, I'm gonna lose my shit and burst out laughing. And you know, you know it's that kind of adrenaline that sits in your body, and so. I think as mates we would swing between that kind of wildly, you know. Yeah. yeah. And you kind of, you had to, you just had to have those moments of levity because... Yeah. Uh, and, because you're, and because we were having so much fun as well, like, it was fun, all of these yeah, things. Yeah. And, and, you know, that last sort of, sort of two seasons, they just packed everything into it. Like, yeah. like, right, we're finishing it up now, we're definitely finishing this time. Just get everything in there and yeah. just get it all done and stuff <laughs> like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brilliant. How about the, end, the Luke Kelly's ending? Did you was that something that you you liked the way that it ended for her? Yeah, well, I was saying earlier again, like at the round table, that I feel she, in a way she couldn't have had any other ending. Like I, I don't think she could have died. I think that she wouldn't like it would have it would have been almost something that she would have wished on herself. I think she needed punishment, and so I think her dying would have not let her off the hook. God, I don't mean that, but I think. The worst possible outcome for Lou is what happened, where she has to sit alone back in prison, um, knowing everything that she's done and everything that she's lost. Like, you couldn't get a sadder ending for Lou Kelly, I don't think. I mean, yes, I wanted to get over that fence, and you know, there was, and we didn't, we, you know, we kept on going into the writer's room and going, what's the body count? How many people are dying? Let us know. <laughs> going and they just wouldn't tell us anything. We actually, we had a little, uh, like a little betting thing in the green room of like, who dies? And you know, put 20 bucks in the box and yeah. stuff, right? You go right down, you go, oh, okay. And you yeah. kind of, and then you have to have this thing of, do I die? All right, I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, um, yeah. And then it's kind of like, oh, and I was kind of thinking, oh, Jake could kind of, you know, the final heroic act would be could be to you know sacrifice his own life for, for baby Grace or something. Yes, the ultimate redemption. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I die. Yes, yeah, yeah. does Ferguson die? Of course she died. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had to kind of you know you know then so yeah. it was it was kind of like a little 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 bookie. We ran a little yeah. bookies thing of who dies and who doesn't die. Yeah. You know? Some people were like. Everyone dies. Yeah, I thought everyone was gonna die. I thought yeah. it was gonna get flattened. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then there's no spin-off, you know. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I also just that shooting that whole last sequence through all the bomb on the escape—it was just such a wild time for us as actors, like because the art department was so phenomenal, but also because we were leaving this set. It got destroyed yeah, in front of us. So, yeah. so we're actually like standing in a place where we once lived as actors and as characters and it's being destroyed in front of us and it's not going to be rebuilt again yeah. and so it was kind of they sad. broke it they down they broke so it down piece literally piece so you would see yeah. them and go there goes my home yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and yeah it was and that final kind of night we all got to run across the grass just trying to escape and it was so cold yes. and it was just it was really thrilling and that was right and we got that whole covid lockdown too so Wasn't you kind of felt like yeah. you sort of felt like you were we were ends of day stuff. Wasn't yeah, it? I know, right? It was. Yeah, we yeah. didn't know what was going to happen. Who, yeah. what the future held for for humanity and stuff. Yeah. But we were here creating this thing and kind of wrapping it all up and killing it and stuff. And it was yeah. this really, it was, so it was an interesting was moment, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was like, and I think that kind of, I don't know. You feel like that epic feeling as an actor working on it. It just feeds into the story and into the show. Just, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It felt epic. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. And like I said, love it, love it or hate it. You know, I mean, some people the whole the whole ending and stuff. You know, some people went, oh, you know, I, yeah. I, I wanted, I don't know what I wanted, but I wanted something different. I wanted something more. And some people were like, I, I loved the ending. I yeah, it was, yeah. It, it kind of just tied it up yeah. and everything, and was fine. Fine for me. Something like this as well. Exactly. Like, what is a satisfying closure to something like this? I don't know. You'll never, you'll never please everyone. Yeah. Right? Well, no. Just ask the producers of Lost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you were saying before, that, that whole set, that the whole, you know, because I was saying how we, they, they took over this old TAFE building, and so it was a big, it was a big kind of brick building, and they literally built the prison inside the thing. Normally, if you were shooting in a studio building, a studio set, you have teams of like carpenters and stuff like that. Overnight, they kind of pull down a set of like, you know, the H block and stuff like that, H1, 
and then they put up the executive offices with the you know the governor's office and stuff like that, and then you go in there and shoot that the next day. Whereas we would just go, oh, we're shooting H1 down here. Now we go up to the governor's office up here, and it's all in you know in situ, or you know. So when it's like you walk through the the set, it it it, it, it existed, and it was all yeah, tangible, very, really, very real place, very real place. And it was cold, and it was scary. Yeah, and it was cold. Yeah. And it was down in the dungeon of this yeah. old big, shitty brick building, yeah. and it was cold, and it was. And it had that real, and the, the color, of course, that kind of, yeah. you know, that that, color, that dreary color and stuff made it colder. Yeah. I'd sometimes go down to one of the cells if I needed a bit of a, a, bit of a nap. Of a I remember going down to Lou's cell for the first time, you know, because also our green rooms and all the production office was upstairs, and I remember kind of walking down to Lou's cell on my own, and it's, you know, there's no real lights on, and it's, it was so terrifying. This is in like week one. And just kind of sitting down on her bed, knowing that I was going to have to play a character that was kind of supposedly afraid of fucking nothing, and I just sat in the cell, oh my god, oh my god. And then I started having like all these terrible visions and dreams about me actually ending up in prison at some stage, and what how awful it would be, and how terrible I'd be, and if people had seen Lou Kelly and known that I could do this, but then I actually got in prison, and I'd just be hiding in the library, and I wouldn't want anyone to look at me or do anything. I was like, oh my god. I drove so safely over that whole period. I like, did <laughs> nothing that could be remotely illegal. I've checked my tax three times. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm never going in. I'm never going in. Yeah, they'd be expecting you to beat the shit out of them. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm a finger right. team. Hi, nice yeah. to meet you. I'm a really nice person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Terrible. Oh, that's unreal. Well, um, why don't we have a bit of a? If anyone has a question. For boxing, here we go. Make your way around there. Oh, there's a place. To there, oh, there's a microphone. Oh, there. there's a microphone. So that everyone can hear. Oh, yeah. That's a long way from where you were sitting. Oh, no. just. Top dog, top dog's coming around with <laughs> the microphone. Nice no, to finally meet you. Thanks for coming out. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Got two good. questions. Yeah, go for it. Who's a better kisser, Zoe or Susie? <laughs> wow, straight into it. No waste any time. Look, they both offered wonderful things. <laughs> Thank you. Diplomacy over here. Can you talk about your character on the new show that you're doing called Deadlock? Oh, yeah, yeah, that comes out in a couple of weeks. I play a police officer. <laughs> yeah, so I'm the one. I know. She couldn't be more opposite to Lou Kelly. I mean, she's a lesbian, obviously, that's all I play now. Um, but um, she is, like, incredibly buttoned up, incredibly, like, yeah, straight laced by the book. Um, I saw the first couple of episodes a couple of days ago. I think it's going to be really good. It was really funny. It's really interesting. It's a kind of, it's a very dark crime, drama, kind of broad churchy, but also a wildly stupid comedy at the same time. So tonally, it's really fucking cool. It's like nothing I've ever seen or read before. So tune in, June 2nd. She seems to have a similar kind of sense of humour, though, to Lou Kelly. Would Does I be right? I've, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen the trailer and it looks yeah. great. Yeah. But a dry, much There's dry, a dryness to it. Yeah, but absolutely. still really funny. Absolutely. But she can't swear, to say, like, she cannot oh. say a swear word. She doesn't yeah. say a single swear word in the whole series, yeah. Wow, yeah. that must have been hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy for me. <laughs> very well kept together. Hi. Hello. Um, Lou's been called a career, career criminal a few times. I was just wondering, when she was on the outside, did she have any jobs that she did, or did she just have to do criminal jobs because of her temper? Yeah, like, I imagine she worked at a video easy at some point. <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon she would have fucking nailed that job, actually. And she probably would have got fired from most of those jobs. But yeah, look, I, I don't think that she ever held down a job altogether. But yeah, I reckon she did a good stint at video easy. And she definitely had the pornos under the counter. She had the pornos under the counter, <laughs> yeah. She just, uh, I think she was well into action movies, actually. I reckon that was kind of her thing. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, I reckon she learned sequences from action movies as a teenager. <laughs> yeah, acted them out with Boomer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always made Boomer be the one that needed rescuing. Just lie there, Boomer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have nothing 
question. That's yeah, cool. of course. Um, Lou said that she grew up around um, places like Wentworth since she was a kid, so mm. I was wondering when she was younger, she was around really violent people, you said earlier. Mm. Um, did she go into any institutions when she was younger, or was she just around the really violent people until she was like 18 and got sent to prison? Yeah. I mean, of course, this is stuff I make up. This yeah. is not stuff that was given to me. This yeah. is all just the things that you do for yourself to spark your own mind. I had um, Lou not going into any institutions, but I had, I had her. My story was that um, she grew up with incredibly violent parents and an incredibly violent life, and um, uh, the details of which, you know, I made very specific to myself, but don't need to go into that, you know, but I, she had a pretty traumatic childhood. Um, and then I just created, there were certain events in her childhood that I created that were so um, horrendous that they stayed with me throughout the whole series. One of them, I had a tattoo on my hand, which had a particular time on it. Yeah, so that was a particular time that Lou saw at a particular incident in her childhood that me and Kate just created and they just reminded me why I fucking hated men. You know, there were certain things that I would just, that would help me feel, um, as an actor, help me kind of, mm, yeah, give her reason for doing what she was doing. So no, I didn't have her going through any institutions. I had her very much kind of dodging the institutions and fighting for herself. So for the first, so it was the first time she actually got into juvie, um, was, yeah, the first time she was actually put in something like that. And it was, yeah, so I don't know if that answers it, but yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Awesome. Uh, uh, as much as a psychotic bitch Lou is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> When she, when she loses Reb, you really make us feel for her. How did you manage to like deliver that raw emotion that she just spills out? Ah, oh, that's good. Um, I think, I mean, as an actor, it's your job to care incredibly deeply about the things that your character cares incredibly deeply about. And um, it's your job to, as if, it's your job to kind of empathise and imagine where you would be if this. And, and so I think it was just that. It was just, I think I lived with Lou long enough and I lived with that love story long enough that you just, um, and also, you know, we all draw on things in our own lives as well if we need it. We've all had tragedies, we've all kind of lost. Um, but I think for me, it was able to stay, this one I didn't kind of need to draw on the world outside so much, I think because we'd lived with this story for so long that the absence of it and the loss of it was just, was going to be a massive fucking tragedy. And, um, and you know, I think it's just the human in all of us that goes, fuck me, like, how would I survive that? And, and also, I think there's also that responsibility that you have in yourself to try and as closely as you can bring a tr a, an incredibly human thing to the screen and and not um, not present it try and try and live it for your audience to witness and I think that feels like your responsibility as an actor and it's a great one to have and it's hard but it's also a fucking privilege and she so just go, I don't want to let that part of us all down that goes, I know what loss feels like, and I want to sit in this with you. And so, yeah, those bits in that in any actor's job are pretty, like, I don't know, privilege is such a wanky word, but yeah, you know, you're really grateful for it. I'm it's just the responsibility but, and the privilege, but it's also the skill. And that's what separates a great actor from a good actor, is just this, the the skill of acting and being able to connect to an emotional piece, a, 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 an emotional thing, and then you know release it so that people go, I fucking believe that. I believe every single bit of it. And that's the skill of an actor. You know, it's 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 part of it, right? It's what makes Kate Box, I, I think, a great actor. Thank you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Hello. Hey, Kate. Hello. Um, so, I loved you um, from Riot, fucking Adelaide, 
um, all of your career, then you came on to Wentworth, and then you killed Murray Winter. And I got emotional at the last Wentworth with Susie Porter. It's like, I fucking hate you. <laughs> it's so, I even posted on Facebook, people through dangling at me for spoiling the, the, the episode and everything. And, I know you're a lovely person. Do you know that? Do you know that? She says so. Yeah, so that's it. But um, I guess my question is to you. I mean, I know it's acting and all that, but like, you know, you do the episodes and you do them in portions. They're not like as we've seen in the Cash Wood episodes. Um, what did your wife think? And your, the children? Like, what did the children get to watch? Of course my children didn't watch it. They're all number seven. Oh my god, imagine. Jesus. My mum let me watch the piano with, um, with the Holy Hunter and I was like... That's true, oh. I didn't see that as a child. That was a bad choice by my parents. <laughs> 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 that was fucked up. I don't have a finger to cut it. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Maybe that's how I got here actually. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I don't... There is. I don't think there's really anything that I've done that my kids have been able to see really there was a couple of little stints in a kids show I did but yeah no hopefully it'll be a long time till they come to that I mean it was really interesting um because when we when COVID hit in the first lockdown hit we had to do so much from home um and so we had to do all of our you know episode reads over zoom and all this stuff and I was like I can't my kids were not at school then I was like I can't hide in the study and say the stuff that Luke Kelly's going to say with my kids kind of hopefully watching Giggle and Hoot next door. Like, it's just not going to happen. And so I had to talk to production about getting a space either in the production office or somewhere where I could do it. So I was like, there's no way. Like, even, I remember really early on, my daughter, Robin, um, who at the time was four, said, um, woke up one morning and said that she'd had a dream about losing a finger. And I was <laughs> no way. I, had kept, I had not said a word no. about the script in the house. I'm like, oh, that shit's just coming what? through the walls. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, get me out of this house. So your wife must have been really angry at you for her, your daughter to say that. Like, No, no, of course not. Oh. They're an actor as well. And, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we're all in the like, industry. Yeah. Surely, like, you know, I mean, you come home, after a long day of work, and he's going, and she says, are you Lou, or are you I'm Kate. Kate. I'm always Kate. I'm always Kate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Thank you <laughs> I much. came home with takeaway things from lunch, so, you know. That's hey, right. kids, I got muffins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, kids, was... there were lollipops on the coffee stand today. Yeah. yeah. That was part of what we were saying before, when we, you know, were kind of laughing on set and everything. And it's part of that whole decompression from your character to kind of, to walk home without the character, you know, yeah. you always left left set without the character, and you kind of went home as you as yourself. Because if you did that, I mean, it would be it'd be a lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 Have you had any people? Have you had any people? What early reactions from people on the street start coming up to you saying anything? Yes. Yeah. 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 My favourite one. And I've had several versions of this. My favourite one is always, you're that lesbian from television. <laughs> <laughs> and it genuinely That's me. I'm like, I fucking am that lesbian from television. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's been nice. And I've had a few versions of that. But yeah, the Luke Kelly, because, you know, that all kind of came out when my kids started school. And that was interesting, because that was first hitting that world as I was rocking up at the PNC. <laughs> so that was kind of an interesting kind of duality to be living. Kind of sideways life. glances from the yeah, parents. Yeah, just take it, just take it. <laughs> um, yeah, and I do remember one day when I first got back to Sydney after, you know, after it had first been released and I was walking down the street with my best mate and I'd had some terrible news and I was having a massive cry in the street with Blair and I was just walking <laughs> And, you know, next minute, there's this woman literally leaning out of the door of her, like the window of her car going, filming me, going, Lou Kelly! That's <laughs> 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 terrible. I suppose you've seen this before, yeah, you've seen it. Yeah, that's right, that's yeah, yeah. Right. You've seen the snot, you've seen it before, yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi, I just wanted to, um, well, I love you. And I Thank you. To... Love you. <laughs> Ask your advice on, um, I'm actually 
wanting to become an actor because of you. Oh, wow. Um, and I wanted your advice on how to start off my career for it. Yeah, right. I mean, do you do classes? Have you started doing classes? Yes. Yeah, beautiful. But are you doing them in Sydney or...? No, I do it in um, Newcastle. Yeah, beautiful. Look, I mean, it's a tricky one, advice, because everybody gets there in their, you know, in their own way. I went to uni and studied it. That's kind of how I got in and then I moved through. Um, so I suppose the only advice that I could give is um, surround yourself by people who believe in you and who want to support that for you um, to um, to love it enough to not um, give up because it doesn't come easy for 98% of us, I think, in the industry. Yeah. <laughs> And um, yeah, so if it's something that you really love, you're gonna have to, yeah, like just commit hard. And just keep the joy in it. Just like always gravitate toward watching performances that you love and trying to understand why you love those performances and what it is in them. And I think most importantly go, there is nobody else out there like you. So your brand of acting, is gonna be unlike anything anybody else could possibly offer. And the worst thing that you can do is try and um, be what they want you to be. Do the work, work really hard, watch people you admire and try and understand their skill and how they got there, but know that nobody can do it the way that you're gonna do it. So whatever you're gonna to bring to this, yes, bring skill, bring homework, bring fucking hard work, but bring yourself. Hi Kate, thank you for coming. Hello, my pleasure, thank you for having me. Prior to the show, you going on the show, did you have anyone you knew? Pretty sure your wife was on the show, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she had to play Tony in the first, yeah, yeah. 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 Did you audition for any previous roles no, before no. you went to Lou, or was it I just didn't. like... No, no, it had never come across my That's weird, table. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know, I've been around for ages, and I'm like... You know, yeah, really, really should, I clearly should be in jail. Yes. You know. um, and there's a lot of lesbians in there, and not a lot of lesbians in there. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's time. Um, but no, that was a that was the first experience of it. Yeah. And like, sorry, I don't even know. Ryan was saying I kind of hated you too when you killed Ryan. Thank you. Still love you now. Thank you. <laughs> sorry about that. It was in the script. <laughs> Certainly wasn't something I just did off the back. <laughs> oh well, that's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always fascinated by the casting, that casting process. I mean, there's never any uh, system to it. It seems there's never any system to it about how. And I, I would sometimes say, how is it that I arrived in this role? How did that come about? And there's no, like, it's a mystery. It's a the casting thing is a complete mystery. And yeah. Tammy McIntosh, who's coming in tomorrow, tells this like, great story about how. When it first came up, they said, Regan, we're doing Wentworth. And she's like, oh, she found out all about it. And she's like, B. Bucking Smith, that's my role. I'm going for that yeah, role, right? right? And she auditioned for it. She got a call back. She was like, I'm close. I'm so fucking close. And she was, and she was dead set on that role, you know? <clears throat> and then she was devastated. Like, you know, I mean, it's like, Okay, well, Dan's amazing and stuff, but like, oh God, I would have loved that role. And she was, she was really devastated. It was, it was that kind of thing. And then it was a couple of seasons later, and then this role came up. Yeah, comes yeah. up, and she's like, she goes, and then, then she gets the role, and, and she must have gone. That it was seemed to happen funny. all for a reason. Yeah, because here yeah, I am playing yeah. this character, and I think it's better. For yeah, me, you know that yeah. sort of thing. So it's, uh, it's such a mystery that casting process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was your favourite and the hardest scene you had to do as Lou Kelly? Favourite and the hardest? Um, I mean obviously the death of Rev was incredibly hard um, and those days were sad and long. I found the killing of Sheila really hard to watch like that because Lou just sat back with such kind of you know so blank and just watched this like what you ended up seeing on screen 
of Martin Dusseldorf. It's like, I kept the tiniest, the tiniest bit yeah. of what happened. It was, when we shot it, it was the most, they actually, they actually said, once they got the final, the, the, the cut before the final cut, everybody, and this is for Wentworth, just went, it's too fucking much. Like, it was so fun. <laughs> Dusseldorf was like fucking like breaking down in front of me. They had bits of skin flapping off her head. Like it was just, it was so wildly violent and went for so long. Didn't you shoot that? Wasn't it that you shot that at the end of the day? Didn't you? It was right at the end of the day. Right, and it was sort of. And it was just when we were told we had to shut down and Marta had to get back over the border because right, the borders were closed. Right. I remember you were up against the time and stuff. Yeah. And it was. Gross. It was so hard and so gross. And because because Kate and Lou couldn't engage emotionally with what was happening, I found that really challenging because it was a lot to watch, man. It was she was <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, yeah. That was a really oh you've gone. <laughs> was a, um, God, they disappear so fast. <laughs> That was a very hard scene, yeah. Can I ask another question without going all the way back over there? No, you have to get up! And, no, you yeah. <laughs> When you and um, Pamela were in the same room, do you think she was intimidated by you, or would you think you were intim intimidated by her? Are you saying Pamela and Kate, or Lou and, and Freak? Yeah. Which ones? <laughs> was, it, was Kate intimidated by Pamela, or was Lou intimidated by Freak? Lou and Pamela. Yeah. Lou, Lou and Pamela. Oh, this is not in comics. Okay, so Lou and the freak together, who was intimidated by who? Yeah. Sorry. No. You know what? I actually don't think Lou was ever intimidated by the freak. And I, I don't know, and she, maybe it read that she was. I, I knew she was fucking nuts. <laughs> and, that, and right at the end, I reckon there might have been a bit where it's like, I don't know what you are capable of. But I just, Lou had such arrogance and such kind of belief in herself as the creep, as like the, you know, the wildest one of all. Like, no, like, you may be fucking crazy, you may be able to do this, but you got nothing on me. Here. And I think Lou held on to that belief. And so I'm sure watching it, you all made a, you know, judgments as to like, no, you're down, you're down, or I don't know. But playing it as Lou, like, no. Nah. Never. It was also Never. the time when it went, when Ferguson was kind of going through that kind of weird, like she wasn't as psychotic as, as she had been as Ferguson. Yeah. She was more like, yeah. and you were kind of like, you're just a fucking crackpot. That's yeah. what you are. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You know. good, good moisturiser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank well, thank you very much for your questions, everybody. And uh, I think yeah. without any further ado, I'd like you to put your hands together and thank Kate <laughs> Fox. over to her photo ops in about 20 minutes. So if you have a photo op with her, feel free to mail us over to them, chop it on some deodorant, spray yourself, and uh, if you don't have a photo op and want to buy one, feel free to buy one over there. And then after Kate Box photo ops, we're gonna do Wentworth group photo ops. Um, but if you have a round table with Katrina, please see Meg in the back, round table. All right guys, we're gonna get Kate over to her photo ops in about 20 minutes. So if you have a photo op with her, Feel free to mail us over there then, chop it on some deodorant, spray yourself, and uh, if you don't have a photo op and want to buy one, feel free to buy one over there, and then after Kate Box photo ops, we're going to do Wentworth group photo ops. Um, but if you have a round table with Katrina, please see Meg in the back, round table.